Live in uh, Santa Clara, this is theCUBE. We're at Velocity Conference. This is O'Reilly Media's uh, big conference around infrastructure, DevOps, applications, in design, front end, back end. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE, and I'm, I'm here. We have two guests. Dave Vellante will not be joining me here. We have Baron Schwartz, the, uh, the co-founder, and Kyle Redinger, co-founder of Vivid Cortex. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. So nice you guys look like you're all geared up, ready to you know, uh, dig in and, and have some good hallway conversations. So first, before we get into some of the stuff going on here at Velocity, let's talk about your company. You guys have a startup, and we love talking to startups because startups don't really feed the BS like the big vendors. We, we meet, <laughs> you know, and they're all unmessaged up. You guys are, are raw, your startups are scrappy, you're doing some good tech, you're still small, and about to announce a VC round hopefully soon, as you guys were saying. Uh, we'll see how that goes. But tell us about the startup. What do you guys do? Do database performance management. So whereas some of these application performance management tools do performance management in the app layer, and let's say uh, the network performance management guys do it in the network, nobody's really doing that in the database. So we're doing that for MySQL. Mm. And uh, how big is the company? It's the two of us, and then we've got a handful of developers right, remotely. So you guys are just busting out. You got an angel round under your belt, and yep. and. Uh, you know, we Dave and Dave and I always do the cube. We've been doing the cube at you know all the big events, EMC, mm -hmm. EMC, all the big events. And you know, I went when I went to when I got my computer science degree. One of my tracks that uh, the dual tracks I had was <coughs> one was operating systems and database. And back then, you, you know, you wouldn't introduce yourself and say, "Hey, I'm a database guy." It was like kind of like, you know, I'm a little bit older than you guys, so it's like that wasn't database was not as cool as it is yeah. now. I got to say, it's really hot mm -hmm. to be a database guy right now because one, is where all the action is. You're looking at flash storage, you're looking at physical storage, the ability to store mm -hmm. stuff is in the highest demand of all time. And you know, what's going on yep. with, face, with Facebook and the open source, contributing code, memcache, whatever you're talking about MySQL, MySQL is the standard. Right. And so it's growing like crazy. So how, how do you guys solve the MySQL growth yeah. for developers? Well, so first of all, you know, if you look at the tooling market around, say, application and the front end developers, you know, that's been relatively robust and, and it's pretty and sexy and works pretty well. And on the database side, it's really lagged things pretty dramatically. So we think that there's a revolution happening on that layer. We've got the tools to be, to come in and, and do it right and make our clients What's happy. What's the big challenges, Kyle? Because right so now the big challenge is, so you look at the tools that people have and they fall into two camps. It's either custom, in-house, what we call duct tape solutions, so people have wrapped together a bunch of open source solutions, put together some custom scripts, and that's how they manage their systems. There's a lot of gut feel in that. Or it's just tons and tons of charts and graphs. Gut feel, right? I like that. And you can sure. imagine if you're a DBA and, and Facebook and you're managing 300 instances of MySQL, you know, having 300 times 1,000 charts is you know, 30, 300,000 charts of data it's really hard to get insight out of all that, and I think that's the struggle that all these is guys. There, is there a big market for you? Because obviously on the hyperscale oh, yeah. side, Facebook is obviously huge, and those yeah. guys have you know probably a need for that. Maybe even written their own homegrown stuff, duct tape their version of it. Um, and the normal enterprise and for developers, is there a, is there a market? You guys see a market for this? Absolutely. Oh. Yeah. You know the the trend that's happening right now is what we call you know people call the big data tsunami, and. There's lots of hype around that, but what you really see is that a few years ago, folks used to manage on a per on a per head basis. They used to manage a few servers, and now people are managing dozens or hundreds of servers per head in IT, mm -hmm. and that's continuing. So yeah, there's a huge gap we, there. Dave, Dave, and Dave Vellante and I talk about storage tiering has always been around for a while. It's been the cutting edge thing. The three part data that got bought by uh, HP for billions of dollars. You're seeing kind of a database tiering going on. For for instance, we had an we have an H based deployment where we're using Hadoop on, and it's great. Store a lot of great stuff in it, but we really want to get anything. We got to get MySQL on top of it right. to pull it out. So we kind of have some unstructured data, and then we got to put some structure around it. Mm -hmm. And just and so you're seeing that, is that normal? I mean, is that what, is that what people are doing? Because I mean, unstructured is good store a lot of stuff on batch, but to get it out and usable by mobile apps or developers is the big challenge. What are you guys finding as the key uh, enabler to, to make? Polyglot. There's a great phrase that somebody at the, uh, I think at the 451 group coin called <laughs> polyglot persistence, which means that we're not going to be seeing a single type of database going forward. We're going to be seeing, uh, the new standard is not going to be relational, it's going to be relational plus unstructured, plus NoSQL plus, you know, and there's lots of these pluses. And mm -hmm. I really do think that that's a trend going forward. The diversity, of, I totally agree. And putting, putting the databases where the data is and, and having flash memory, all this new stuff come down, it's going to make it faster and programmable, persistent. Um, do you guys see the developer mindset shifting? Uh, and how do you guys take advantage of that shift towards, mm. say, low latency, real time? Developers are king. 
And new technologies have always been driven by developers. So you look at the meteoric rise of MongoDB right now, why is that happening? It's not because the CIOs and CTOs said thou shalt MongoDB. It's because <laughs> the, the MongoDB stack. developers yeah. find it really fun to work with. Well, also and the LAMP stack has been around for a while. Yeah. Right, yeah. so that's a nice fit. Yeah. Versus specialty. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so I got to ask you about your talk. You're doing a talk at Barron, quantifying abnormal behavior. Now, that's for not people. That's no, for that's, what? that's actually, <laughs> I'm going to take this, this sort of gearhead topic and make it for people. <laughs> so for example, I was just polishing off a visualization of something that uh, lots of people find absolutely baffling, which is exponential moving averages. I'm going to show people how that works visually. And can you give us a little taste of that? Uh, What's going to, not about kind of ruining your, your talk tomorrow? It's, it's a little bit difficult to describe in words, which is why <laughs> pictures are worth a thousand words, but let's just say bar graphs stacking on top of each other. <laughs> All right, so, so um, is the website up and running? How do people contact you if they want to get a hold of uh, uh, your products? Is it shipping? Uh, where are you guys at in terms of the product? Is it free, is it download, open source? What's the deal? We're, we're in early alpha, you know, not in stealth mode anymore, but in early alpha. So we've got a beta wait list and we've got a handful of uh, very happy early customers and you can go to vividcortex.com. So I got to ask you the VC for... question because obviously when you have a hot startup, you know, you kind of, you know, coy with the, uh, you know, we're not sure, can't really talk about it, which means you got some funding coming. Mm. What are the conversations like at the VCs? When you go talk to the venture capitalists, you don't have to name names. It's just name, just go through some of that. Are they deer in the headlights? I would love to or name names. I would love to. Can't, names can't, can't do that. Name yeah. names. <laughs> don't you, know make, it, you never know what your B round's going to get. It's, it's funny. Come. So we're in Charlottesville, Virginia. So there's a bias against small town, East Coast tech startups. Um, and that bias, uh, as we've come to learn, is, is really the uh, mantra of if it's beyond a 90 minute drive outside of uh, Sand Hill Road, no one wants to fund you. Um, but, but generally, I think people were, were pretty interested in our idea. We had, we had a lot of interest in the two firms that we're working with are, are fantastic, and they sort of jumped across the table when you first talked to them and recognized the industry. You know, it, it was, you know, for us, you really, to understand our space, you have to be in the pain of IT ops. And if you're not, if you're just investing in that space and you've never lived it, you don't get it. And the investors who've lived it yeah. and understand it and have our other portfolio companies in the space get it. And, are, and we're really excited to be part of their team. Yeah, and, you know, and I think you yeah, totally you hit the nail on the head, and that's one of our experience as well, is that if they've lived it and touched it, they get it, because IT is changing, right? IT is automating. I mean, the level of transparency now is going to be, you know, what mm -hmm. used to be kind of network mm -hmm. and kind of software, that's moving up the stack. It's going to be yep. a, a nice hardened top where, mm -hmm. you know, no one's ever going to ever see that again. That single plane of glass was going to move up. It's going to be push button. It's going to be, it's going to be dashboard based. It'll so take a while. It's going to take a while. <laughs> but, you know, but again, the hard part is the database piece. And again, you can yep. look at all the action. And when we started SiliconANGLE four years ago, uh, my uh, partner Dave Vellante and I, we always, we talked about which markets we want to go in and uh, cover and be yep. analysts first for, and we said storage. Yeah. Because back then, everyone was like, what, storage? It was, you know, spinning disk, but storage was, is the center of the action. Absolutely. On the converged infrastructure side. And then we saw big data coming right on top of that. We saw the middleware layer baking out. We so, saw the database trends, and uh, you know, that's what we do. And so, a lot of the rest of the world doesn't get that. Yep. So what, totally agree. Storage is sexy. Databases are sexy. And here, Databases yeah. are kicking ass right now. So what do you say to the CIOs out there, guys who are looking at private cloud, looking for the hybrid, looking yeah. for the public, they want to have those policies. What's your message to those? So here, here's the thing that's missing from that equation is people, right? So we all know the data tsunami's coming. You know, what, you know, if it's 50 or 100x data by 2020, we don't know, it's still Massive. ginormous. Yeah. But the problem is the people don't scale that way. You don't have 100 times as many people who can manage systems. Right, so you need tools like ours that allow you to better, better manage and sort of empower your staff. And we hear this from companies all the time. It's like, great, I've got 10 senior rock star DBAs and sysadmins, but I can't find any other senior. They're all gone. That Google, Facebook, GitHub has them all. So there's none left, so what do I do? Well, I have to hire a junior guy, and I have to empower that junior guy with much better tools, because that junior guy is going to come in it's been managing you know, 50 times as much yeah. data as his yeah. predecessor. It's a labor year. problem. Yeah, it's a huge labor shortage. So the only way to solve that is to invent tools that make people much more Well, also there's, no, there's another force on top of them. First of all, I totally agree with you, the labor issue. And also they're shifting. The DBA is now a data scientist, so now you're seeing different functions kind of get retooled. But yep. the other factor is that we were just yesterday, we brought the Cube to do a live broadcast up in San Francisco for the General Electric, did a big mm -hmm. uh, investment in Pivotal. They had Amazon, Werner Vogels on stage with our Jeff Kelly and um, uh, Paul Moritz from Pivotal. 
and it was about the Internet of Things, they're calling the industrial cloud. Again, that's a database problem. Yeah. Right, so, you know, yeah, it's if all you got some, data some turbine data coming off the airplane and you can't mm -hmm. monitor that, I mean, yeah. that's a pretty critical value proposition yeah. right there. And you know, I said developers are king a minute ago, but it used to be that developers sat in the worst cubicles um, and the tools <laughs> and, the, and the esteem recorded to developers has, has changed. We think the same thing is going to happen for operations staff. Well, it's, well, DevOps has kind of pointed the way towards the, the, the complete you know, levelization, leveling out of those two roles where if you're not in harmony, you're toast, right? So like, you know, we're seeing the early signs of the net, guys who have code need to push code. They can't wait for provisioned hardware. Right. That's just a fact. But the cloud solves that, right? So, um, final question, what's next for you guys next year? Mm -hmm. Okay, you get some funding down the road, you probably got some good leads there, close that out. Got to go to market, you're in alpha, what's the plan? Make customers happy. Really, I mean, really happy. We are razor focused on big name accounts, making them happy, getting the story out there, having big wins, um, and getting ready to scale. So this round for us is really about product fit. When do you think scale will hit? Fall, of, I'd say fall of next year is, is the time to go. So you're going to lay down time. the groundwork, get some beachhead, get a position, and then build out. Exactly. Yep. And we have our heads to the grindstone and we're writing a lot of code now. How many coders are you guys hiring good coders? We're hiring the best. And we have a secret strategy that I cannot reveal on air. <laughs> we'll but I will out. say that Charlottesville is part of it, and that was one of the interesting things about talking to VCs. Well, we love having you on. I'm from Silicon Valley, I've been there 13 years. I'm from the East Coast originally, uh, New Jersey and Massachusetts. And I got to say that, you know, there is certainly a bias on the used to be, used to be hardcore. Mm. You know, now with, you know, virtual, mm -hmm. virtual work, it's, you're seeing more VCs do that, but you know, got a, got a big fan of the entrepreneurs and computer science is everywhere now, and I think, yep. you know, look at Stanford, the, the computer science grads, the highest selection for all incoming freshmen of all the majors is computer science. Makes sense. So you see in the tsunami, a, re, a rebirth of comp sci coming in. So great to give you guys that uh, chance to talk to the audience. Thanks for coming inside the Cube. We'll be right back. This is Silicon Angles, the Cube. Talking about databases, storage, both are sexy, continuing to be sexy and getting sexier every day. <laughs> um, we have uh, um, Vivid Cortex, quantifying abnormal behavior, velocity, talk tomorrow, good luck with that. We'll be right back uh, from theCUBE right after this short break.